Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Sabater. I am an engineer with DoorDash. Um, I've actually been with DoorDash for about uh, eight months or so, but um, some folks in the room might recognize me from a previous life. Uh, prior to joining DoorDash, I was actually an engineer, or I was actually at Cockroach Labs, um, working from the other side for about two and a half years. So um, I got to see both sides of the spectrum, and it's been a uh, you know fun time here. So I'm looking forward to chatting with everyone. So um, let's set the stage a little bit. Alessandra gave us a good background in how we got to Cockroach. Let's set the stage a little bit about who we are and what we do. So myself, several other folks in the room are a member of the uh, core infrastructure team, specifically storage infrastructure team. And we're responsible for the scaling, tuning, operating, and building tools around Postgres, Cockroach, Cassandra, Kafka, and ElastiCache. And uh, as you can imagine, one part of that is running CockroachDB, and that's what we're gonna talk about today the way that we uh, run a fully abstracted CRDB as a service for the engineering org within DoorDash. So a little bit about how we deploy. Um, we deploy CockroachDB in a single AWS region, although we do have multiple regions. Um, we run three AZs within those data centers, uh, directly on EC2. Um, we're running replication factor five. Um, we're using ZFS on EBS to isolate us from the entropy of what you might find with EBS, any unpredictability. Um, we've standardized on uh, M6i or M7G instances, and uh, we have everything fronted by an NLB in front of HAZ to direct traffic evenly among them. So a little bit about our growth story. So uh, anyone who was here last year at uh, Roachfest or might remember some of these numbers, but since then, We've grown up here a little bit. Um, our number of nodes has increased by about 55%. Data size has more than uh, almost doubled to uh, almost two petabytes at this point. Um, largest cluster, over 1.3 million ranges. Change feeds, um, you know, getting close to 900 change feeds at this point. So a little bit more about our, what we're doing here and the uh, scale of what we're working with. Uh, we have about 335 clusters right now across 230 nodes, almost two petabytes of disk. Um, our, our daily peak within Cockroach is uh, typically you know, in the neighborhood of 1.2 million queries per second. Now, that's not rows per second, queries per second. Um, and I think you know, I heard this morning when Spencer was talking, he mentioned something about some on-demand delivery company with uh, like 900 change feeds. So I'd actually like to meet those folks because it sounds like they're doing what we're doing. Um, we're using auto-scaling. Um, our largest cluster, actually, this is out of date as of a couple hours ago, but our largest cluster as of this writing was 96 M6i 12x nodes. I just spoke to a member here of our DBOps team, and he mentioned that they just scaled it up another 24 nodes, so we're up to about 120 M6i 12x nodes, so do the math on those numbers, of course. Uh, largest cluster, um, you know, we got up to about 650 terabytes in a single cluster and we provision new clusters with an SLO of under six minutes. So from the time we hit go, we can have a cluster up and running in about six minutes or so. So um, you know, within, within DoorDash, right, we run this abstracted service for all the engineers within the company. And um, you know, it's been a growth story, right? There was a point where we just had a couple clusters and now we're up in the multi-hundreds numbers of clusters. There was a time where we created users manually. There was a time where we created users by defining them in uh, GitHub and having them applied with Terraform. We're uh, making big efforts in the self-serve space. And uh, what we're looking at here right now is our DB console, which enables self-service for a whole bunch of our services. Um, specifically, in this case, we're looking at a cockroach self-serve screen here. So this allows our users to go in, um, create, in um, create application names, create users for them within their clusters, uh, and we have the same kind of functionality for other services, so Kafka, Redis, we can create um, topics, et cetera. And self-service is continuing to be the direction in which we go, and we're trying to you know, essentially be uh, enablers rather than gatekeepers of the technology. We want to enable our customers to be able to do the right thing safely um, you know, with necessary approvals uh, but without us being gatekeepers of that technology. Um, in the same way that we're enabling our customers, we're also enabling ourselves. We're, we've developed a control plane for automation and um, managing operational tasks within CRDB and other technologies. So uh, we're leveraging Argo workflows. Um, some examples of the things we're doing there. Uh, we're doing repaves, upgrades, scaling, health checks, all sorts of different maintenance. And this has actually been a really big win for us. Um, 
historically, some of these operations have been vectors for incidents, right? Um, when you have a manumatic or manual process, right? If you have the human involved, uh, we've seen cases where you know things can get messed up. There's too much data to understand. There's too much to interpret to safely do some of these operations. And uh, leveraging these workflows, we're able to automatically um, complete these operations in a hitless manner. And uh, this one operation alone, um, repaving, which is the idea of replacing all of the nodes within the cluster with brand new nodes. Um, whereas in the past, it might have taken us about 100 days of engineering effort to complete. Now we're able to do it in about 10 days. Uh, so that's a massive win for us. Um, other forms of automation. So um, we have hundreds of clusters, hundreds of users. Uh, we can't reliably monitor each and every cluster uh, visually, right, or um, in a manual sense. So we rely on AWS auto scale groups to scale our clusters for us. As workloads demand, as new workloads come online, um, whenever we hit a certain threshold of CPU, three new nodes will come on, one across each AZ, nodes will rebalance, the kind of auto healing nature magic of cockroach happens and uh, traffic gets redirected to the new nodes and you can see in this case, you can see our latency dropping down. This has been a huge win for us. It usually takes about two, two minutes for nodes to come online when they're demanded. Um, observability. So um, we've made a very conscious effort within our organization to increase uh, density and be more efficient with the hardware we have, right? It's, it's fairly easy to scale. Um, it's not so easy to scale appropriately or um, efficiently. So um, like I mentioned before, we have, a, we have about a 55% increase in the number of nodes, but more than 2x the volume of data, or around 2x the volume of data. So the way that we have been able to do that um, is by using the hardware that we have more efficiently. So um, we have tools like this in place. This is an internal tool right now to basically monitor the uh, health and uh, resource metrics of clusters at different points throughout the day, um, whether it's peak, whether it's off peak, and size these appropriately. This is something that we're gonna be pushing out to our dev console here in the near future. Uh, another observability piece. So, um, you know, we support many, many customers within our organization, and uh, everyone has their own challenges, right? And uh, one of the very common asks we get is, you know, how do I find my query? Why is my query slow? How do I in, uh, improve the performance of my workload? Um, we've developed uh, a front end to a tool provided by the CRL uh, field engineering group called Metrics Exporter. I think they might have renamed it to Vsys now. Um, and this tool, we call it Metrics Exporter, the Metrics Exporter front end, uh, allows our users to actually be able to go in, find their queries uh, in a time series fashion, uh, the same data you might have in your SQL activity page, have it in a time series fashion, and be able to identify um, you know, the queries they're looking for and answer their own questions about their own workloads. So we'll go ahead and play this little video here. I'm gonna take us on a quick walkthrough of our implementation of Metrics Exporter. This dashboard allows us to see SQL activity in a time series format. Up top, we have SQL runtime. This allows us to see the percentage of runtime for each query type in relation to the total runtime. Below that, we have a breakdown of runtime by application type. So you can see which applications are responsible for the majority of your runtime. That chart, this chart shows us the SQL efficiency. We can see how efficient our total SQL workload is, um, how much full table scan activity, uh, optimized index joins, et cetera. Now let's say we want to answer the question of uh, why is a query slow. So we can come down to this panel right here, SQL latency. We can find the outlier in this group. So we can see this uh, query up top here is uh, the uh, slowest one. We can actually just click it, do, go to view seer to be console. It's going to go ahead and open up a new tab for us. And now we can look at the actual query that we're looking for here. So now we can see the actual query. We can see all the statistics about it right here in the Cockroach UI. And thank you, CRL, for that tool. It's uh, been extremely helpful for the whole org. Um, so one of the core values of DoorDash is 1% better every day. And that doesn't necessarily mean perfection. Uh, it means never any improvement, continual improvement of the processes. And one way that manifests in our organization is um, by continually re refining the alarms, alerts, 
the metrics that we have around Cockroach to improve the service for our customers. So um, just for example here, um, every week, whenever we have any sort of an incident, anytime we have any sort of a critical alarm or page, um, we huddle and we review those incidents. We ask ourselves, how can we prevent this from occurring again? What can we change to improve this? Um, and then we address that and eventually improve that so it doesn't happen again. Um, it's the power of small gains, right? Small improvements you make today will pay dividends in the future. Um, so let, let's see how that kind of played out for us. Um, what we have there in that chart is our uh, critical alarms um, over the period of uh, about a year or so. And during the same period, we had about 70 new clusters added. So despite the addition of many, many hundreds and hundreds of nodes and uh, at least 70 clusters, um, our alert volume is trending down. And that's thanks to this feedback pr process that we have of continual improvement. Some of the alarms and some of the alerts that we are working with, um, that we're working on improving, um, everything from node health, range availability, uh, disk statistics, uh, throughput, IOPS, et cetera, LSM health. Um, we actually run a um, change feed sidecar. That was a, a tool that we implemented uh, at some point in the past uh, to address some issues that we had with um, maintenance activities within change feeds. So we're able to reduce pages that way. Um, we're leveraging SURF as an independent observer of the network. So um, whenever the question comes up about what's the network doing, now we have statistics to tell us that. And another tool, Disk Surf, um, which gives us actual observability into the EBS volumes. So, um, you know, no journey is without its uh, pain points, right? Um, some of the um, causes of either internal incidents or cluster incidents that we have uh, can be probably bucketed within two categories. Um, we see, you know, we've had issues in the past where full table scan operations from our customers, either from, you know, maybe a bad plan or a new workload coming online, can cause issues for our clusters. Um, we've worked with CRL. CRL's actually introduced guardrails for this. And uh, using some data, we're able to pull out of metrics. Um, using some data from Metrics Explorer, we're able to identify clusters in which we can effectively disable full table scans safely without breaking anything in flight. And I think we've probably done about, we have about 150 of them that we can immediately turn off. Um, index operations. So, um, you know, as a database as a service, our, some of our, um, you know, clusters and some of our users are, um, you know, it, it may need new indexes, may need schema changes. Um, and, you know, we've seen cases where that can cause some impact to latency when it's done during peak. So uh, CRL has actually introduced some admission control for this to help reduce the impact. Um, and DoorDash, what we're, we're actually working on a project here as well to introduce a self-service tool plus linter to, to essentially verify the validity and safety of these operations before they occur and ultimately fail fast if we need to roll back. Um, and that's gonna be part of our self-service project here as well. Efficiency and performance. So this one is actually a really cool one. Um, earlier this year, uh, we started piloting in um, AWS's Graviton instances along with the CRDB ARM build. And we saw very surprising results. Going from similar instance type of M6i to M7G, um, we saw better query QPS, better query throughput. We saw significantly reduced uh, P99 and P29 latency. All for, you know, at list cost, it's about 15% cheaper if you look at the list price. So it seems like a huge win, and we've been rolling this out in production. Um, I think the GA just went out very recently, so we've been rolling this out in production. And another piece, so uh, ZFS tuning. So ZFS is a core part of uh, the way we're able to drive high write volume um, through CRDB. It also acts as our durability layer um, given the um, unpredictability of EBS at times. Um, and with this, um, we've taken some efforts here to understand how we can better tune um, our implementation of ZFS for CRDB. So in this particular case, um, what we've done is created dynamic values for different instance types um, to alter the ZFS arc settings um, and what we've seen is significant improvements here at a, essentially a zero dollar cost. Uh, and we're able to drive more traffic through CRDB much more efficiently. 
Okay? So just to summarize, um, you know, scaling isn't hard. Um, we've been very successful in scaling clusters very large. Um, scaling efficiently is, right? How do we do this efficiently? How do we use the hardware that we have better? Um, and I think we've demonstrated the way that we've done that via um, self-serve and dashboards. Don't be a gatekeeper. Um, you know, we try to enable our customers to do the right thing with the tools that, they, that we produce. And uh, that's, been, that's an ongoing operation that we're continuing with. Um, more clusters, more hours, and you know, build the tools and automate. We're, we're continually building tools to enable ourselves as well. How do, we do, how do we manage to continue to operate the current fleet we have as it's continuing to grow without scaling our team linearly? Um, performance improvements can be cheap. We've seen you know, several cases here where we are able to get drive significant in performance improvements um, just by doing some tuning, some settings, or changing instance types. It's been very successful for us. Finally, um, you know, take the big bet. Um, we have a very significant roadmap within our organization for the coming year. Um, we'd love to talk about it with anyone. If anyone wants to approach us at lunch, we'd love to talk about it. So thank you. And one other plug, too. Um, if you want to read more about our largest clusters, um, there's actually a publicly facing DoorDash blog out there. If you Google DoorDash Cockroach DB feature store, uh, there's a publicly facing blog that'll explain some of the stuff we just spoke about here. Thank you.